Welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer. A link to the Praying with Teresa of Avila website has been provided below to enable you to find the catalog of offerings on this channel, along with the notes of today's presentation. First, Second, and Third Mansions The door of entry into this castle is prayer and reflection. This leads to a spiritual conversion. Some traits of persons in the first mansions. These people are now in a state of grace. They have good intentions. They try sincerely to avoid mortal sin. Pray sincerely a few times a month. They are still very much absorbed in worldly affairs. They are in semi-darkness due to their shortcomings. They strive to give up unnecessary things and business affairs. They fall into sin occasionally, but recover humbled. Commentary These new converts are now a God-fearing people filled with zeal for the Lord. They witness to others how God touched their lives and saved them from a life of sin. They are filled with gratitude for God. Some traits of some persons in the second mansions. Now they avoid even the occasions of serious sin. They realize that more effort is required to progress. They can now recognize the call of the Lord in other people, in moving sermons, in reading good books, in times of illness and trials, in good events of life, in truth and prayer and draw some good from all events. They realize the devil is working to prevent their progress. They pray many vocal prayers and begin to meditate. They still keep company with bad companions. They are determined to carry the cross they grow spiritually from falls into old sins. Commentary For St. Teresa, bad companions were those who had not yet received the grace of conversion and were still following the old values of not fearing God. Some Traits of Some Persons in the Third Mansions now they strive to avoid committing venial sin. They spend hours in meditation, recollection, simplified prayer. They have a well-regulated way of life, time well used. They do not let devotions interfere with their duties of life. They can now see better how religion and life fit together nicely. They practice works of charity and love, doing penance. They enjoy a simplified prayer of recollection, much less meditation. They use much less reasoning. They have a simplified use of the imagination. Their senses obey better. They have a simple gaze. They have a deeper general awareness of God. They still use regular meditation from time to time. They enjoy the sweetness of the Lord much more. They think they have much virtue and are very discouraged when they fall. They are restless if despised or lose their reputation in any way. 
they have become conscious of their virtue and take false pride in it. When trials come, they sometimes fall and then become very depressed. They are in a jumbled state, so holy but so weak. Why? They need further purification. They have not arrived. Commentary Man's Effort versus God's Hand In the first three mansions, the soul must work with the aid of ordinary grace to become Christ-like in virtue, thought, and desire. These three mansions, or degrees of perfection, are dispositive. But in the fourth mansions, the grace of God-man intervenes more directly, discernibly, and gratuitously to introduce the soul to a holy supernatural knowledge of God, experiential knowledge. This knowledge and consequent love is the beginning of the transformation of the soul by which it will be led through the succeeding mansions to the most perfect divine union, spiritual marriage. From the picture, it will be noted that the first two mansions may be traversed the most quickly, granting that the soul is faithful and does not turn back or dawdle on the way, because the third mansions, in a state in which the soul must become rooted in well-regulated habits of virtue to achieve Christ-likeness, it is reasonable to suppose that this will entail the longest period of time. Amen.